The following program does not offer personal medical advice. Please consult your doctor before using any treatment or product we cover. Welcome to Go To Health Media with your host, Jonathan Marks. We provide a welcoming environment where experts educate you on important health topics, answer your questions, and provide information from which you can benefit in consultation with your doctor. You can visit and subscribe to the show at gotohealthmedia.com. And now, here is Jonathan Marks. Hey everyone, this is Jonathan Marks. Welcome to another show of Go To Health. I have a question for you. Which cancer causes the greatest number of deaths in the United States? Did you guess breast cancer, prostate cancer, skin cancer, kidney cancer? None of those. If you guessed lung cancer, you're right. We hear so little about lung cancer. Each year, we lose about 130,000 people to lung cancer in the United States. That's four times higher than colorectal and pancreatic cancer deaths, which average about 50,000 each year, and it's more than colon, breast, and prostate cancer deaths combined. Lung cancer. According to the American Cancer Society, the average age of diagnosis with lung cancer is 65 and older and it's equal among women and men. And if you get lung cancer, and the doctor will correct this if I'm wrong, but the American Cancer Society says if you have lung cancer, you have only a 50% survival rate. Hopefully that will be changing. The two largest causes of lung cancer are to no surprise, smoking tobacco products, which accounts for over 80% of cancer deaths. And you guessed it again, secondhand smoke being exposed to tobacco smoke. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, and with us to talk about this today is Dr. Luis Godoy, Assistant Professor in General Thoracic Surgery at UC Davis Health in Sacramento, California. He specializes in lung cancer surgery and patient care with special interest in minimally invasive thoracic surgery. Welcome to the show today, Dr. Godoy. How are you today? I'm doing well, Jonathan. Thank you for the invitation to be here. So let me ask some questions to get us started. What are the causes of lung cancer? So first and foremost, like you mentioned, the top two on the list are smoking. We've known for decades has been a primary driver for the development of lung cancer. Now, there are patients who also have other environmental exposures, things like asbestos exposure, radon gas. And then there are certain genetic components that patients may be susceptible to developing a lung cancer, even though they've never smoked. So, you know, about 10 to 20% of patients every year uh, out of the cases diagnosed are in never smokers. So there is a genetic component as well. Oh, really? Okay. And what about vaping? Vaping has become so popular. Vaping of tobacco products, even vaping of cannabis. Let's talk about tobacco first. Does vaping reduce your risk of lung cancer? Actually, you know, the data is not quite there yet. So vaping is relatively new. And we know that that cancers in the lung, especially, sometimes can take decades to develop or for us to see the after effects. So there's mm -hmm. patients that smoke for 30, 40 years that develop a cancer, you know, 40, 50 years down the road. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have not seen... We don't have that long-term data to implicate those methods of inhaling nicotine or, or cannabis mm. to say that they definitively cause cancer. However, we know that anything that's vaporized and inhaled can cause a, an inflammatory response in the lining mm. of your lungs, which then predisposes you to developing a lung cancer. Okay. So we don't know enough yet about vaping. What about smoking cannabis? Does that also produce lung cancer? It, it, it does, again, but like the data collection for cannabis smoking has not been there over the past couple of decades because, you know, for the longest time, it's been criminalized and it's been illegal to do so. So patients who have developed lung cancer, we don't know how many of them developed it based on tobacco smoking or marijuana smoking because they don't feel comfortable being forthfront with their providers 
or with collecting, you know, volunteering that information to their provider. So we don't know the true number, but we can delineate that that's one of the causes of potentially developing lung cancer as well. Thank you for that. Some unknowns, but a cautionary tale here. So what are the symptoms people should look for when lung cancer develops? How do we know we have it? So the reason why lung cancer is so deadly is because in its early stages, it does not cause any symptoms. So Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you that there are people out there watching your podcast without any symptoms who smoke that are sitting there with the lung cancer that they just do not know of. And this is why so many people, uh, as a matter of fact, 75% of people diagnosed with lung cancer are diagnosed in the later stages. So that's when you typically start to find symptoms because that's what prompts patients to go in to see their doctor. And some of those symptoms can be, you know, a new uh, cough, coughing up what looks like clot or blood, a new pain when you take a deep breath or in the chest. Those are the symptoms, but those typically don't manifest themselves until you're at a much later stage. So we're trying to shift that that, uh, stage of diagnosis from, you know, 75% in late stage. We're trying to shift that over to where we can diagnose people at earlier stages, which is when lung cancer is best treatable, is, is the best chance for actual cure if we can catch it early enough. Understood. So there is screening for lung cancer. How often are you supposed to get it? And what advice do you have for people when they do get it? So the lung cancer screen, it's a low-dose CT scan. It's an annual scan. And you go to your doctor and you talk about what's called a shared decision making where they go over the criteria. If you meet it, you go and get an annual scan. You can discuss that with your doctor at that point. Sometimes there's like incidental things that are found. And so you have to have that discussion with your doctor. But yeah, it's an annual scan. It's very quick. It's a low dose, high definition scan of the lungs. You can identify even the smallest of nodules uh, on those scans. So if your doctor doesn't bring it up, you should bring it up with your doctor. Make sure you get an annual check Absolutely. Checkup. As a matter of fact, I always tell people, even if you don't smoke, anybody out there watching your podcast, even if you don't smoke personally, but you have a family member, a friend, an aunt or uncle, if they smoke, really, I would suggest that you recommend to them that they talk to their doctor about seeing if they qualify for one of these lung cancer screening scans because it, it may very well save their lives. Good. Okay. So there are new therapies I'm understanding for the treatment of lung cancer, and they're getting even more personalized. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. And this has a, been a dramatic shift in the way that lung cancer has been treated. And it's really changed the overall, so the life expectancy and survival that you mentioned in the intro, this is shifting. And specifically over the past five years, you know, there's a lot of new clinical trials underway. But what we can do now is we can take the tissue biopsy, you know, at the time of diagnosis and not only diagnose your lung cancer, but we can then send that tissue off to the lab to get a genetic profile on the cancer cells. Mm. So we can look for specific mutations within the lung cancer cells. And then we also have a arsenal of targeted therapies that are designed to target these mutations. And by doing so, they can minimize the side effects and enhance the treatment by destroying the cancer cells while leaving the healthy cells unharmed. So these these treatments are a lot better tolerated, and they have been shown to extend life expectancy, even in late stage patients where we've seen survival extended up to four years. Wow, wow, that's amazing. So this is all relatively new, different now that we have about treating lung cancer. That's right. And there's more in the works. There's a lot of new clinical trials and people are trying different combinations and and, uh, there's a lot of promise. I bet that within the next five years, things are going to improve even more significantly. Great. So this is kind of a funny question, but can smoking cessation programs better support patients undergoing cancer treatment? I I have a hard time believing that if somebody's undergoing cancer treatment, that they're still smoking. Is this addiction so powerful? Yeah, it's one of the most challenging things to quit. I have patients with lung cancer 
who can't quit and it's it's not because of a willpower thing it becomes a physiologic thing their body is like physically craving the nicotine you know and a lot of patients there's a stigma associated with smoking related lung cancer because a lot of patients are you know you people point the finger at them and it's like well you you know this is self-inflicted but we really want to shift that because it's not the patient's fault i treat a lot of veterans in in my practice and a lot of veterans were given cigarettes in their rations like early on before people mm -hmm. knew the gross after effects of smoking. And so a lot of people feel ashamed about it and don't ask their doctors for assistance in quitting smoking. So we really want to implement some of these projects. So the American College of Surgeons has two quality improvement projects. One is called Just Ask and then the other one's called Beyond Ask. And we try to increase the access for these programs by, by providing like these empathetic smoking cessation resources so we can offer patients these practical strategies and create a welcoming environment where they can talk amongst their peers and providers in order to pursue the best options for them because there are resources that are available and it's just a matter of providers being empathetic and teaming up with the patient to help them walk through this difficulty quitting you know i've had patients i've removed entire lungs and they still smoke you know we have to try to work on working with them and supporting them through this difficult path. Thank you, doctor. If you want to learn more about this, there's a great website the doctor mentioned by the American College of Surgeons. It's F-A-C-S, that's F as in Frank, F-A-C-S dot org slash lung cancer. And you can go there to learn more. Doctor, I also wanted to ask you, you made kind of a name for yourself and won an award in really promoting health education and health care among underserved populations. Can you tell us about your work and the award you received? Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, so I received this past fall the, uh, the American Association of Medical Colleges Nickens Fellowship Award. And one of the main focuses of my goals is to help address these specific issues, you know, lung cancer in particular, amongst underserved communities. For example, I'm in Northern California, and it's one of the most diverse cities in the country, not just ethnically, racially, but also socioeconomically. I see patients in Sacramento uh, all the way up from the Oregon border, the Nevada border, because there aren't many tertiary care centers out there. So some of the rural communities trying to implement these programs out in order to help these patients overall have a better outcome at the time of diagnosis. You know, we really want to help these people that are underserved and don't have the resources available to them. Got it. And I understand you are an immigrant yourself. I, I am. Yes. I was born in Mexico and my family came to the United States when I was a child and grew up in the agricultural areas of Northern California. And yes. I've been proud to call, you know, Northern California my home, which is why I care so much about this topic. Thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Godoy. We've been talking with Dr. Luis Godoy. He's a thoracic surgeon at the UC Davis Medical Center in Sacramento, California. We've been talking today about lung cancer awareness. We really don't hear much about lung cancer in the news as much as other cancers. So it's great today that you came and talked with us about this, making us more aware about lung cancer, its diagnosis and treatment. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I really appreciate it. Good. And remember, you can watch us at gotohealthmedia.com on YouTube and eight podcast networks. And as we say at the end of every show, remember, go to health. We'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in this week to Go To Health Media. Be sure to join Jonathan Marks and another health expert next time. You can also catch the program on your favorite podcast platform. Until our next show, be sure to visit us on the web at gotohealthmedia.com and elevate your life.